let's talk about a few things regarding this deadly skin cancer. Hello, I'm Dr. Dustin Portella. I'm a board certified dermatologist and skin cancer surgeon practicing in Boise, Idaho, and I'm here to help you learn more about your skin so you can take better care of it and make better decisions as a consumer in what skincare products you will choose and how to have the healthiest looking skin throughout your entire life. When I walk into a room and I can see a melanoma from the door on the patient, it just makes me scream inside. Fuck melanoma. Molly Russell's wart. May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, and Monday, May 3rd was Melanoma Monday, and dermatologists all over took to social media to warn about the dangers of melanoma, the most deadly form of skin cancer. As a dermatologist, I diagnose and treat melanoma regularly, and it can be a deadly form of skin cancer. Melanoma is actually the third most common type of skin cancer. The most common is basal cell carcinoma, Basal cell carcinoma often can start out like a small pimple or a shiny bump, usually on the head or neck, and it just never heals and never goes away. They rarely lead to death, but there's over 3 million of them diagnosed every year in the United States, and they can be locally destructive and disfiguring. I do surgery on these all the time, and I'm removing parts of individuals' noses and ears and sewing them up and reconstructing parts of their face, and it's awful to be diagnosed with basal cell carcinoma, but fortunately, it's not the type of skin cancer that can lead to your death in 99.999% of cases. The second type of skin cancer that we see most commonly is called squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma is a little bit more aggressive in some instances, and it can lead to death. When a squamous cell carcinoma occurs on the lips or on the ears, it has a little bit higher risk of spreading inside the body, and that can be deadly. But fortunately, the majority of basal cell carcinomas and squamous cell carcinomas are caught at early stages, and we can do surgery or radiation or other treatments in a dermatology clinic, and the patient is cured, and they never have to worry about that spot again. As I mentioned, melanoma is the third most common type of skin cancer, but it's the one that is the most lethal. More people die of melanoma than any other type of skin cancer. Melanoma comes from a type of cell called a melanocyte, and that is the pigment-producing cell in our skin. Interestingly, everybody, regardless of your skin tone, has about the same number of melanocytes. It's just that in darker skinned individuals, their melanocytes produce more melanin and they're more active. And when these melanocytes undergo mutations, they can become cancerous, and that is what melanoma is. To learn a little bit more about melanoma, we're going to talk about the four types of melanoma, the risk factors to get melanoma, the warning signs if you have melanoma, and what the potential treatment options are if you're diagnosed with melanoma. Melanoma comes from our melanocytes, and melanocytes produce pigment in the skin. When you have a group of melanocytes together, that can form a mole, and most people have a mole or two on their body. Some people have many, and moles are just a benign collection of melanocytes. And 20 to 30 percent of melanomas will come from existing moles. So that's why it's important from a dermatologist's perspective. We recommend that you look at your moles on a monthly basis to see if they're changing, if they're undergoing um, any color change or border change, or if they start to become symptomatic, if they itch, bleed, burn, or tingle, your existing moles. But that means that 70 to 80% of melanomas arise on completely normal skin. So they just pop up a new brown spot that looks ugly from the very beginning. There are four main types of melanoma. The first is superficial spreading melanoma. And this is a melanoma that occurs on the skin and it grows wide. It spreads out widely before it starts to grow deep. Superficial spreading melanomas are very common among the family of melanomas. And when they're caught early, there is a 99% five-year survival. Most people do absolutely great if they're diagnosed with an early superficial spreading melanoma. When they stay in the top layer of the skin, we call this melanoma in situ, and these have an excellent prognosis. The second type of melanoma that we see is called lentigo maligna. Lentigo maligna is a type of melanoma that occurs on very sun-damaged skin, usually on the faces or the hands or arms of elderly people. These are people that have had years and years of sun damage, and the ultraviolet light causes mutations to happen in the DNA of the melanocytes, eventually turning them cancerous. Most of these also can be caught at early stages, and they haven't grown deep into the body, so they can be treated, and the patients have an excellent survival rate. But because these often occur on the face, they are disfiguring and require major surgery, and sometimes really complicated reconstructive surgery to make sure that somebody's appearance is maintained, that they can still look good. But sometimes it's not totally possible. Skin cancer can be quite destructive and can be disfiguring, 
mean, that's one of the reasons that we stress as dermatologists that you need to protect your skin. The third type of melanoma is called acral lentiginous melanoma. And this is a type of melanoma that occurs on the hands and the feet. This is the more common type of melanoma for individuals with skin of color. Now these in and of themselves are not a more deadly or aggressive form of skin cancer, but they're often diagnosed at later stages because we don't look for them on the palms and soles as frequently. And there's a perception sometimes that darker skinned individuals cannot get skin cancer because they're protected by having excess melanin in the skin. And it's simply not the case. So acrolentiginous melanoma can be a lethal form of melanoma. One famous example of acrolentiginous melanoma is the singer Bob Marley who died of melanoma that started on his foot. The last type of melanoma is called nodular melanoma, and this is about 15% of all melanoma cases, and this starts out aggressive, and it is one of the most aggressive forms of melanoma. It grows deep into the skin very early in its development, and it can spread inside the body very quickly, and it's often diagnosed at stages where it's already spread. The survival rate on nodular melanoma is lower than all of the other forms of melanoma. How do you know if you have an increased risk of melanoma? Here's six things to be aware of that may put you at increased risk. Number one is unprotected or excessive ultraviolet exposure, UV exposure. This can be from natural sunlight or it can be from tanning bed use. Both have been shown to be causal factors in the development of melanoma. So this significantly increases your risk. You can avoid direct sunlight between the hottest parts of the day, usually 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and don't ever use indoor tanning. Number two is a weakened immune system, whether it's due to natural causes or medications that lower your immune system. Our immune system is very good at finding cells that are going bad, that are having mutations that could lead to cancer. As your immune system becomes weaker, it can't find those cells and fight them off as easily, and cancer is more likely to develop. This is why we see more elderly people develop cancers of all types than young people, because as we age, the immune system tends to become weaker. And there's certain medications you could take that could also lower your immune system. A third risk factor is having many moles on your body. So if you have 50 or 100 or more moles on your body, you're at a slightly increased risk of melanoma. It's not a crazy high risk still, but it warrants you getting checked by a board certified dermatologist on a more regular basis. It's always a great idea to go in and get a baseline exam when you're an adult. And if you have a strong family history, perhaps even earlier in your teenage years. And that's a conversation with your own doctor. But if you have many moles, it has been shown to give you a little bit higher risk of developing melanoma, particularly if those moles are atypical. There's a syndrome that some people have called an atypical mole syndrome, where their moles don't look totally normal to the naked eye. And if we were to biopsy them and look at them under the microscope, they also have some weird features. And that atypical mole syndrome can put you at increased risk of developing a melanoma. Number four, having fair skin skin puts you at increased risk of skin cancers of all types. You have less melanin in the skin. Melanin is nature's way to help protect you from ultraviolet light. And when your skin is very fair, you don't have as much natural protection. And so you're at increased risk for basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and of course, melanoma. So light colored eyes, blue eyes, red hair, blonde hair, and just very fair skin. And those types of people are going to have higher rates of skin cancer than individuals with darker skin tones, darker hair, darker eyes, just because of the difference in melanin content in the skin. If you've had a history of skin cancer, that's the fifth thing that could put you at risk for a melanoma. If you've had a skin cancer of any type, you have a higher risk of developing additional skin cancers because you've already shown to have that predisposition, whether it's due to other factors that we've already talked about, like increased ultraviolet light exposure, a weakened immune system, those kinds of things are going to increase your risk for the development of future cancers. Or a strong family history. That could mean genetics, which is our sixth cause of an increased risk of melanoma. If your family history has certain genetic mutations to put you at risk of cancer, then you may have a higher risk of cancer as well. And there's a lot of different syndromes that can put you at risk for cancers. Melanoma has its own genetic mutations, and then things like pancreatic cancer or colon cancer have other syndromes that some families carry. So if you have a strong family history of any particular type of cancer, talk to your family doctor and see if there's any types of screenings that you should be going through on a regular basis. Let's take a few minutes and talk about the warning signs of melanoma. In the dermatology clinic, I educate my patients to look for these five things. We call them the A, B, C, D, E's of melanoma, and it's easy to remember because you just have to know the alphabet. A stands for asymmetry. If you look at a mole, one side being different than the other side, that could be a risk factor that the mole is doing something funny. So if you were split it down the middle, you want each half to look like a mirror image of the other, and if it does not, that might be something to talk to your dermatologist about. 
B stands for border, an irregular border. Typically when we look at a mole, we like a nice round, smooth border. That's a reassuring sign. If it's got notches in the border um, or jagged edges all over, that can be a warning sign that it's having a growth going out in one direction or the other, and you should talk to your dermatologist about that. C stands for color. If a mole has one tan color, brown color, that's usually fine. But if a mole has multiple colors in it, that can be a warning sign that it's undergoing changes that could lead to melanoma. So if we see two, three, four different colors in a mole, tan, brown, black, gray, white, those things are commonly associated with melanoma and you should bring that to the attention of your doctor. D stands for diameter or dark. Again, touching on color a little bit, like a pitch black mole is something that always catches our interest as dermatologists, but more commonly this stands for diameter. Diameter means if it's bigger than six millimeters or about the size of a common pencil eraser. If it's very large, it may have a slightly increased risk for developing melanoma and E stands for evolution meaning change. If your mole has looked one way for years and all of a sudden it looks differently than you remember, it's undergone some type of evolution or change and that's a very sensitive sign that your mole is doing something that could be concerning and you should bring that to the attention of your dermatologist. If you've been diagnosed with melanoma, the treatment options can be widely variable depending on how aggressive or how early your melanoma was caught. Fortunately, if a melanoma is caught early through screening with a dermatologist or your family doctor, then it has a 99% five-year survival rate, meaning it's got an excellent prognosis if it's caught early. So you should check your skin, and if you have a family history or you're concerned about something, have a dermatologist check your skin. If you've been diagnosed with melanoma, the most common treatment is going to be a surgical excision if it's at an early stage, where a dermatologist or a surgeon will do a procedure often in the office, sometimes in an operating room or a surgical center, to remove the melanoma with a safe margin. With melanoma, we We'd like to make sure that we get around and get a good clear margin of tissue so that there's normal tissue and we're not getting close to the edge or cutting it too close um, and also going deep enough to get under that melanoma in case it started to grow deeper into the skin and not just wider. It's common for a melanoma to have a half a centimeter to a one centimeter margin of safety when we perform an excision depending on how big it is or if it started to invade or not. Surgical excision has a great prognosis for early melanomas. As with many cancers, chemotherapy has been used in melanoma, but for years the treatment has not always been as successful as we'd like, and it wasn't until recently that we started to do more immunotherapy in helping to trigger the body's own immune system to fight off cancerous cells that we started to see bigger jumps in the survival improvement. In some cases, there's a role for radiation, and when we get to the point where we're talking about targeted therapies, immunotherapy, chemotherapy, and radiation, it becomes a team effort where a dermatologist, general surgeons, oncologic surgeons, medical oncologists, and radiation oncologists will work together to plan out a treatment to attack melanoma wherever it's at in the body. The take home message is that if you have a spot you're concerned about, if it's tan, brown, pink, black, whatever it is, go get it checked by a board certified dermatologist or bring it to the attention of your family doctor to see if you need a referral to a dermatologist. Melanoma and all forms of skin cancer can have an excellent prognosis if you catch it early. So make sure you're checking your skin for those five ABCDEs every month. And if you're worried, go see a dermatologist.